Hello everyone, we are back after a little bit of delay. We haven't recorded this in a while, uh, talking about scenario number seven of the Dunwich Legacy. Although one of our viewers commented that it's actually pronounced Dunwich, which I kind of knew, but you know, that's how you pronounce it in England and there isn't actually such a place in Massachusetts. So who knows, maybe they pronounce it differently. Did you know it was supposed to be Dunwich? I have heard it both ways, in fact. I think that Dunwich, I've heard it as like the American pronunciation, but who knows? Yeah, I know there's like some weird pronunciations in Massachusetts, like Worcester, I think is yeah the way that long city is called. But I think it's also the same in England. I don't know. Anyway, not really relevant, but kind of an interesting thing to remark on. So let's just, you know, talk about the actual scenario, which is where Doom awaits and yeah. Let's go to TTS and, and talk about it. Yeah, we're not. Uh, we're not. We're we're kind of in Dunwich. We're we're climbing a hill today. Um. So yeah, everyone, we're going to start at the base of the hill, and uh, we need to find some paths. Um, you're going to investigate the base of the hill to find these diverging paths. And spoiler alert: same thing's going to happen at the ascending paths with the altered uh, with the altered paths. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you're going to go there. You're going to get some clues. Uh, eventually, when you get to the top ascending path, uh, get to get some more clues, etc. And then uh, eventually, you'll have to get to Central Peak and uh, meet Silas Bishop. But so, uh, so you actually first don't off, need that many clues. It's just like what four to go each time, or sorry, two per correct. investigator per per time. Yeah, so I believe it's four per total. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, technically, yeah, a total of six per to as well as to finish the scenario. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's not too many. Not too many, not for sure. And you have so much time to get them. So, um, yeah, I think that this one said, starts with some doom on it, depending on how you did in the last one. Exactly. So for every doom, sorry, for every brood that escaped into the wild in the previous scenario, you added doom. Um, so technically, that's a maximum of five if you somehow let all five into the wild. And uh, if you let none of them into the wild, that's zero. Wow. Um, I have found this to never matter. <laughs> yeah, though there's so many. This is like 12, and then the next one is 10. Yeah, 22 Doom total for this entire scenario is crazy. Like, I think the fastest I've ever done it, I've done it like eight turns. Wow. Um, so you really don't even need that much time. But, uh, you know, who knows? All right. So let's, yeah, talk about the other part of the setup, I think. Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, on standard difficulty, you're going to get a minus five, and, uh, you know, other difficulties get higher numbers. Um, big, big token... Big token, yeah. First time they did this. Um, it's uh, one of the last, or not just to say last time, but they don't really do this anymore. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on putting a big token in near the end? Um, I think it's good. I mean, it also is just one token out of, I don't know how big the bag is, like 16 or 17. Right. So it depends on if you have those other uh, symbol tokens that you've added along the way. Whether or not this is going to matter. I mean, it's kind of scary because you're trying to think about, oh, can I cover a minus five? Um, but I wish they did this more often just to, you know, have more stuff in there rather than just adding a million symbols. Right. Yeah, I think that what they've kind of leaned more towards in recent memory is instead of making the the number tokens big, they do make the symbol tokens bigger mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and or their effects worse. Um which to a certain extent makes sense because since a lot of the symbol tokens react to your decisions throughout the campaign, it is kind of like your decisions are coming back to bite you. Mm -hmm. But without adding the bigger number tokens, um, it means that there's a lot more variability with the math when it comes to the actual um, numbers. Um, yeah, that's true. Although, you know, sometimes I just kind of ignore it and say, hey, I might fail some of these, I might not. It's not quite an auto-fail, but if your deck can, can't really... Like, could, should you try to pass a minus five on every test? I feel like no. Right, not on every test, of course. Mm -hmm. It probably, like, you know, previously you would be pretty safe at a minus two. Now it'd be like, I probably want to go to mine up three at every test if I can. Yeah, I agree. want to pass that, right. All right, so that's the tokens. Mm -hmm. um, as well... What happened in uh, not where did, uh, bleh, blood on the altar mm -hmm. uh, affects which of these second acts you get? Oh my god, there's so, so many. Yeah, uh, you get version one if the investigators restored Silas Bishop. 
And that occurs if you spent clues in the hidden chamber and an investigator had the Necronomicon in play. AKA you were able to turn him back to a human and then he dies again. <laughs> uh, the second one is if the investigators fail to recover the Necronomicon or if the Necronomicon was stolen. So that happens if you failed uh, Night at the Museum, which I can remember, never remember the name of this actual scenario. Um, it, oh wait, it's just called Mystic Sonic Museum. That's right. Yeah. If you failed that scenario, if you took the Necronomicon and died on the train, if you took the Necronomicon and died in blood on the altar, and I don't think it actually reacts to you if you died in uh, Undimensioned Unseen. So those are the two cases. That, um, that's just normal dying in an invention in a scene, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, you get version two, and then version three is that none of the above are true, aka either you, you know, were fine, you still have the Necronomicon, or if you just decided to kill Seth Bishop, for example. Okay, and spoilers, um, what's the difference between these? It's just the other side of them, right? Exactly. So, if you restore Seth Bishop, Seth Bishop is uh, just going to fall off a cliff. Um <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of sad see the again why i don't know they you remove seth bishop from the game and we'll get to him um they're later in the scenario but here he is he's just a big guy he has retaliate uh but he's worth victory meaning that you don't get the victory no it's a little sad all right that is a little sad um version two aka you failed to have the necronomicon he just comes into play normally i guess he has the powers of the necronomicon at this point um, and then the version three is he comes into play, but there is one per investigator damage on him. Uh, yeah, I, 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 there's, there's honestly not very much difference between the three of these other than the fact that you don't have to deal with suspicion at the top one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he's honestly kind of just, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's not too tough. Like three per investigator. I know it's a five fight, but you can, you can deal with that. I think at this point. Right. I think the, the issue here is like he he's not massive, right? So he, he, someone could just hold him. Um, he does have retaliate in the five fight, especially now with the minus five token in the bag can become a little bit of a trouble. Um, if you, you know, trying to get at 10 skill value the entire time you're hitting him, it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. um, but like three per investigator health, even two per investigator health, it's like nothing for a boss. Yeah, that's pretty unusual. Uh, but otherwise, that's all of the setup instructions. Actually, with one exception, I just remembered. Um, if you killed Silas Bishop in Blood on the Altar, you get a conglomeration of spheres uh, in the ascending path, and then you shuffle the other two into the encounter deck. That sucks. They've got Hunter, so you, you're going to get attacked right away? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. And you also cannot move there. That's so right. Yeah. Either you get attacked immediately, or you try and get out of there to a... A diverging path as fast as you can. Yeah, that's one of the things about the scenario. There's a few things we'll mention from the encounter deck that uh, care about you doing things up here, but you can't get there yet. So having an enemy start there, you're just going to take a hit. Yep. And, and then and, waste uh, your actions trying to kill it. <laughs> especially, you know, as the as the the fighter in the first first turn, like if you somehow do not are unable to put down a weapon literally the first turn like this guy's going to be a problem the entire you know first few turns and uh it might end up just you having to punch this guy six times and that never feels good i do feel like this is one of those cards or setups instructions that doesn't scale with player count at all yeah so there's only two of these and you know you can only spawn one right so if you're four player like yeah who cares but if you're playing solo or two player that really uh, is yeah. going to monopolize your what you're doing on that first turn and second. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also, weird, very tiny change. Um, if Naomi has the investigators back, a.k.a. you played the house always wins second and you rescued Peter Clover, uh, the lead investigator gets a clue. Uh, two clues if there are three and four investigators. Yay. So it's kind of like you're getting you're getting half of a clue per investigator type of thing. Right, so that's enough to only have to go after one location at the base of the hill. In in true solo, because um, 
if you have three investigators, you'll still need two. Oh, you're right, because it's two clues if there's three or four. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. So it's not much. It's not much. And no. they do they do add on to this in the return to. Yes, yes, very much so. Yep. Hmm. Uh, shall we talk about the different paths? Yes. All righty. So first off, important to say that in order to get them into play, you have to investigate using this ability on the card. So you cannot use your Sixth Sense or Right of Seeking or or Duke to investigate. It's uh, <laughs> it's just using your intellect. You can use Magnifying Glass to help out, but you can only take this action once per round per investigator. So if you fail that, then I don't know, you do something else the rest of your turn. Yeah, it uh, it's pretty bad. Why did I think? Why is it limit once per round? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think they thought about the whole what if you fail because <laughs> again it, it most likely w should have said limit limit either one li either limit one success per round um, or like something else right um, I think they were trying to limit like one person just dumping all of the locations out and then you know having a breeze with it is like forcing you to go in and out of the locations because of how the locations act with uh, or or react with how many actions you have left. That's true. Um, but I don't think yeah. this is the way to do it. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> now, the investigate um, as being on the card is also problematic, but they do come back to fix that in the return too. But I don't know, be kind of I haven't played this without a uh, seeker on the team, so I don't really know what it was like to go through the the base version and showing up with Duke and saying, well, I have two intellect. I need to pass a three test some number of times and uh, yeah. just having a bad time. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I played this with Jacqueline Fine once. Um, Jacqueline was actually able to get through it because she had three book and she was able to fish zeros with her ability. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine anyone other than a seeker actually pulling this off consistently, at least. Um, the roughest part is that you can only try it once. Like, again, if you were able to try it, even if you fail, then maybe that's okay, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. On the one hand, I do like that, you know, forcing you to use a particular uh, skill and not just rely on your, you know, mystic stuff or, you know, commit some cards on, uh, on something else. But yeah, the limit once per round makes it kind of <laughs> a little, little bit too harsh. And, yeah. you know, seekers shouldn't be the only uh, class that can get clues. Yeah. Hey, maybe you have Streetwise in play, though, if you're a rogue. That's true. And yeah. you know what? It doesn't cost any more XP this, uh, when you play this <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> That's true. Screw Mystics, though. They don't really have a lot of what could we... Uh, maybe Al uh, Alyssa Graham. There, there, you go. there we go. All right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, um, you're going to actually, during setup, get rid of one of these uh, uh, diverging paths as mm -hmm. well as one of the altered paths. And then whenever you investigate the location, one of these is going to plop out randomly uh, unrevealed. So you'll have to move to them to see what they do. And uh, for the most part, all of them have to deal with whether or not you have or do not have actions remaining. So Slaughtered Woods, take two core if you have no actions remaining. Uh, Eerie Glade, discard the top two cards of your deck for every action you have remaining. So it's like you want to have actions when you get here. You don't want to have actions when you go here. Um, a little, little bit of a you slap don't really in the know face. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I'll I'll get to this one in a second because sure. it's kind of, this was kind of mean, but Frozen Spring you basically lose all your actions. So to be most efficient, you want to go there with no actions remaining. If only uh, you knew. Okay, if only you knew. Uh, destroyed path. So you put one per investigator doom on it, and you have to investigate as an action on the card, as we said before. Uh, and if you succeed, you remove doom from the destroyed path. So, what do you usually do when you hit this card? I feel like I have so much time, I literally just ignore it. Yeah, you should ignore it if you... Because, like, the Doom might not matter. It probably won't. And it doesn't even give you any clues. So yeah, you're, like, wasting your time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And also, I actually think that this is one of the cases where the scaling does make sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you're putting, like, for example, in four-player, four Doom on it, most likely you'll have someone who can spare actions and potentially have a good book stat to actually investigate it. Um, whereas, you know, in True Solo, it has one Doom. like, oh, whatever, I'll just leave. Yeah, just go back. Yep. You know what it would be uh, fun in this scenario? Pocket Telescope. That would be fun. And probably broken. 
Um, all right. So uh, when you actually, it's an interesting thing about this first act. I don't know. There it is. Um, when you have the tuper, you have to immediately advance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think theoretically, it's technically possible for you to get more than two per because of that one clue. If Naomi has got your back, so you get an extra clue. Uh, actually, is that a, do they have to lose all their clues? Uh, okay, it's possible. Uh, it'll never happen though. Um, basically, they they're like, oh, you need to go up to the new the the new part in order to get the clues now because we want to see you the new locations. Okay, that's about it. So when you advance, it just says, yeah, you just reveal yeah. it. You just reveal it. Um, and notably on the second act, they all say you cannot get clues on, or actually you, you cannot place clues on non-altered locations. So mm -hmm. these locations are just useless. All right. All right. So that flips the ascending path. It has the same text, but now with these altered paths. Which are going to be a little these tougher. these altered paths. Because you get yep, the skulls now. Tougher. Shroud four, right? Oh, it's shroud three. Well, just with the, once you go to the altered paths, the skulls now become minus threes. That is correct. Uh, all right, tear on the path, take your damage. So it's the same thing as here, but for damage. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is if you have no actions remaining, you discard top five, which uh, is relevant because there is uh, Beyond the Veil in this encounter set. Mm -hmm. uh, lost memory, take it horror for each action you have remaining. So that is essentially this one. Yep. And then Dimensional Gap, you spawn an enemy here. So if I am reading this correctly, you have no action. You want actions. You want actions. You want actions. So like these three, you want actions when you get there because mm -hmm. you want actions to deal with the enemy when you get there. And this one is the only one that's like if you have actions, it's bad. Uh, whereas these ones, it's kind of like it's kind of 50 50 where these ones. Uh, no. Uh, this one and this one, you kind of want actions left in, in case you want to investigate it before you leave. That's right. And then these ones are like you don't want to have actions when you get there. So I don't know. There's like kind of an imbalance there. It's kind of a balance. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I do feel like, I mean, if you aren't looking ahead somehow with, you know, the telescope, it doesn't really matter. Like you should be built yeah. to like, I don't know. So for take one horror for each action of remaining, what happens with like Daisy? Yeah, that, that is a good question. I do believe that those extra actions are counted. I'm not sure. That would be a good question. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably answered somewhere, but yeah, that like two, like the two horror you get from slaughtered woods is kind of similar. I feel like you should be able to tank two horror in this scenario or damage or, or whatever it is. It seems like an average effect. All right. All right. All right. Get the clues. Go back, and then you can go up here. Yep. And uh, up here, uh, Seth Bishop's going to spawn, of course, and mm -hmm. get more clues, finish the scenario. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And get some more victory points, too. Hopefully. Uh, of course, you could technically bring clues up from the uh, altered locations and lose out on the clues here. I guess that's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Um, I think the big thing that I remember about this scenario is... You know, there's this stuff about the locations and going up the hill and all, but it's this enormous encounter deck. Yeah. So, do you want to talk about the scenario specific ones first? Sure. So, uh, all of these these treacheries, they're all kind of weird. Um, they're all hexes. So, yeah, they're all hexes. Uh, Vortex in time doesn't affect one investigator; it affects everyone at a Sentinel Hill location, mm -hmm. aka the paths as well as the peak. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, it's two damage if you fail, which is a pretty tough test, to be fair. It is, yeah. Uh, all right, spaces between. This one's a weird one. Uh, all of the revealed stuff, you just shuffle them and then put them back out. I remember there the, there was like this weird ruling that I saw one day on Arkham DB and decided to just end the day there. Which is <laughs> like, if something was attached to the location, how would you know what location to put it in and there and i think the ruling was like yeah the like you should know for some reason because it's attached anyway it, it's 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 bs it like i i think that if that ever happens i'm just like i don't even know which one and when it does eventually come in if something is attached to it and put it there i don't even know <laughs> i would just discard the attachment i know it doesn't say that but 
I feel like it, it really should say that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're removing um, the clues from it. I feel like that's kind of the same idea. I feel like yeah. this half the time I played this scenario, this is actually helpful. Yes, I agree. Um, either it refills clues on locations you've already investigated, so you get more clues without having to take the investigate action on the path, mm -hmm. or it, uh, you know, you end your turn there when you have all the clues and you're like, oh, okay, I just moved to the Central Hill location for free. That's, That's nice. right. That's what I felt like happens most of the time. You just end your turn, you draw this, and then free move action. Yep. Uh, right tile, so discarding cards from deck. That's the theme in this campaign. And then each uh, investigator at an altered location has to reshuffle weaknesses that they've discarded. A little spooky. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got some enemies. This guy. Yeah, I love this guy. <laughs> One, because he has victory and he's not that hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and two, if he kills you, if he if he defeats you, he kills you, which is awesome. <laughs> It is. So this is one of the few scenarios in the game where you can just outright die or end the campaign. Uh, this, yeah. Both of those things can happen here. So um, we'll, we'll talk about the ending the campaign bit in a sec. But uh, yeah, I mean, he just seems a lot scarier than he really is. Mm -hmm. When I played through this on my channel with uh, Zoe and Rex, I think I auto failed uh throwing maybe two vicious blows or something oh no at this guy and i still survived because like as long as you've got one hit that you could i mean if he can hit you once like it's probably fine you're yeah. not gonna get all the way down to nothing but he's a good thing to fish out if you have on the hunt or kicking the hornet's nest uh, fairly mm -hmm. early on yep only one of them though yep two of these guys uh yeah, the devotees are the keys. They're kind of like the quote-unquote cultists of the scenario, effectively at the end of the enemy phase, so not during Hunters. Uh, they move towards Sentinel Peak, but if they're already there, they add two doom to the current agenda. So they're just making things go faster. Mm -hmm. So when I first played this scenario, uh, and my group lost, I have to say, right. um, I don't actually remember, honestly, what happened other than these guys just messed us up. Like, I don't uh, know why we didn't bother to go get the get them, but it, they spawned here at the base. We probably were off somewhere else, and then he moved up. And, you know, since we couldn't get to the second uh, tier of the mountain, yeah. like, that was it. He just kept yeah. going. Yeah, and uh, it's tough that it doesn't even say, like, you know, if he's ready or if he's unengaged, right? Like, he just will move no matter what. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're in that first act and you get up there, or sorry, and uh, you can't get up to the ascending path, then uh, that that feels pretty bad. Yeah, maybe that's what happened. Maybe he spawned and then, like, we couldn't kill him in the one round, so yeah. off he went. Yep. Get over here. That's a good card for this. <laughs> that's a good card. Um, and then yeah, the rest of the encounter sets we've already seen. It's the return of the uh, monstros. Oh, sorry, the abominations. Mm -hmm. Um, these guys are pretty tough. Uh. So a lot of health. This guy effectively uh, is weird as well because he spawns location farthest from us, which could be Sentinel Peak, could be like the one of the locations at the base of the hill, for example. Yeah, um, I feel like he's pretty soft here because you're only going one direction. So if you don't yeah. draw him early, then you can spawn him down at the bottom, and you're like, mm -hmm. he's never coming after us in time. Yeah, and uh, Altered Beast more often than not for me, it gains search here because it's very rare you're going to draw an enemy and also the Altered Beast and mm -hmm. not have to deal with both. Mm -hmm. The Thrall? That's um, a little tough, I think. Yeah, the Thrall is tough. It definitely is uh, leaning into the non-melee weapon stuff. and uh, it's. I think it's better here than Undimensioned and Unseen since that one has a bunch of enemies you already need to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, but them being here is like just more meat Yeah. The fighter. Alright, we got these. Yep, more discarding cards. Pretty much it. Mm -hmm. There's so many cards in the encounter deck, though. I know I said that already, but like, you're. I feel like you can dodge most of these discard effects because you might not draw them. Yeah. Uh, victory. Some wizards and some thralls. <laughs> good victory. Victory is good. Uh, Light of a Forgamon is pretty tough in this scenario, especially if you're on the last agenda. Um, because you have some very long agenda slash acts in this one. So it's like, when it, when it goes up there, it's probably not going to go away. That's true. Cancel this one if you can. Yeah. And then just um, basic stuff. Yep. Ancient Evils. Yeah. This is, is the one scenario I'm like, 
perfectly fine to take ancient evils. I have so much time. Yeah, 22. So, yeah, let's uh, count how many are in here. Oh my 47, god. 47. Oh my including god. Including the abomination. That's so, so many. So you'll start with 46 if you have them. So in two player, you're not going to. Oh. Nope. No way. Because you even shuffle the discard pile in the encounter deck on the, the first flip, too. Correct. So <laughs> you're not going to see half of these. No. And uh, yeah, it definitely is something that a lot of people bring up that because the deck is so huge, there's a lot of variance with the encounter draws. Like, it's totally possible that you'll draw like three enemies at the very beginning and just be screwed and die. Um, or your first 10 turns will be nothing, and then the agenda advances and you reshuffle it back in, and then you get more nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, that's what makes this one kind of not, not so memorable to me. Right. Anything else you All want right. to talk about? Oh, yeah, the, the tokens. Yeah, mm. let's quickly do that. So skulls are kind of fine. They grow as you go. Albeit, when you're at Sentinel Peak, it's not altered, so they're just a minus one, which is kind of weird. That is weird. Okay. Um, cultists. <laughs> this has never happened to me, but I imagine it would be very annoying if you committed some vicious blows to an attack and you had to cancel those effects. Yeah, I mean, I like that effect. Like, they brought it back in the Scarlet Keys uh, yeah. few scenarios, but yeah, kind of mean, but there it is. A little bit mean. Uh, tablets are not bad at all. Like, just numbers, no no bad effect is is fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like on, on the expert, it's an auto fail. That's fun. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's an auto fail if you uh, agenda two. Okay. I kind of like that. That's kind of fun. Look how much the uh, skull goes up. Minus two to minus five. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um. All right, and then, yeah, the monster. You uh, discard two cards and uh, total their costs. And you get that as a negative modifier. Uh, I have seen that as a. I think the best I've seen is a minus nine. <laughs> it was a uh, Leo De Luca and like probably a lockpick, honestly. All right, and, get, uh, that get was this. hilarious. Put uh, two copies of level zero extensive research. Yep, minus twenty four. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. What? And then you uh, search through your. No, you you need a difficulty twenty four test. To search you... through your deck with with rabbit's foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, rabbit's foot three yeah exactly yeah i need a difficulty 24 i don't know where you're gonna find that other than circle undone exactly um <laughs> drawing honestly <pin>. it's fine <laughs> yeah it's fine this is yeah, not like so i guess the only thing to comment here is that if you draw discard skills or weaknesses that don't have any cost it's nothing Correct. nothing so, yep okay that's nice um that's about it yeah i don't know it's, it's not just much to say about this not much to say so let's just uh go back to our ratings and have more of not much to say. All right, replayability. How different is each playthrough? Honestly, like, not a whole lot. I mean, I guess that you could draw all kinds of different stuff, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe just I don't remember very many um, playthroughs of this one, but I don't feel like, <laughs> I, I don't feel like there's a whole lot going on here where you feel like, depending on which, uh, locations you go into it's really that big of a difference you're gonna get slapped I've, in some way or another absolutely um for some reason no matter how this scenario plays out for me whether or not one of the acts is different whether or not i get different altered paths diverging paths whether or not the encounter deck is slightly differently it always feels exactly the same i don't know how um it's like it's almost like it's anti-replayable like even if the locations didn't have different locations, like it still feels like it's the same every time. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah, the different acts don't that the story text, I guess, is different, but it doesn't change enough for you to feel like I'm playing a different version of the scenario. Yeah, uh, I'll give it a 1.5. All right, that's what here. Yep. Yeah, OK. I don't feel strongly enough to say anything different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a fine scenario. Like, it still is kind of a, it's just, it feels like Arkham, you're going around getting clues. It, maybe it's just too short. That's possible. Yeah. All right. Um, when it comes to fairness, I think that the main thing that is unfair is the huge encounter deck. Um, that it can lead to scenarios, or sorry, situations that become unfair just because of how big it is and how variant it is. 
Um, that's I think that's basically it, with maybe one exception. Like, I think that I would understand a a perspective that it's unfair to like not know what the effects are on the different uh, diverging paths, altered paths. Because, like, sometimes you can get really screwed by them. Um, like, you know, taking a horror for each action you have remaining, that could just kill you outright. Um, it could, so, but it's, like, the scenario isn't long enough for you to... Um, I mean, I guess if you drew, like, the rotting remains pretty early and then you just get bombarded. So maybe that's the part, but I just think of, when I think of the, you know, mitigating random elements, there are some scenarios where something happens where losing all remaining actions is just awful right this one yeah it should be okay it's true um that's true so yeah i think i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give it a 2.5 um i do think that the encounter deck issue is big enough for me Mm -hmm. that it is a little bit unfair um but ultimately it's fine i think it's interesting that this might be the first time where does the scenario apply appropriate pressure feels like it's a miss in the wrong direction. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Where maybe there's a not lot enough of, pressure. There's not enough pressure. It's like, so maybe or, part of it is that you're just kind of, you, if you have played it before and you sort of understand that there's 22 rounds that you could have, uh, then you can just sort of wait at the base of the hill and build up. There's like, there's no reason not to do that. Right. Other than the um, take two damage willpower test. And also, if you have a conglomeration of spears spawned on you, right? Potentially, right. Um, it almost feels like the the core set uh, devour below, where you could just sit on the starting location and gear up for a while. You right. probably can do this. There's not really a whole lot of reason to, um, you know, take that intellect test on the location and with even if you're not ready for it, you know. Even sitting on the um, the uh, the paths, I think, are is okay too, right? If you don't want to go back to the uh, the base of the hill, you can just sit there until the game makes you do it. Basically, yeah. As long as you um, you know, get the clues, and then you can just sit there, and then eventually you'll get teleported back potentially. Yeah, two point five is fine. It's like okay, like I do feel like that you're not doing much that's meaningful or interesting, but the consequences aren't usually the worst it's it's just that yeah you could draw the enemies before you're ready and then you shuffle them back in and you get them again that's kind of bad but yeah you should be able to deal with it okay i never had a problem with that part it was i think again i did say i lost the first time i played so i'm not gonna lie about that but i think we just didn't know what we were doing (laughs) right i don't know why we couldn't just try to kill that guy maybe it's just that that one Maybe we couldn't kill him, and then he ran away at the end of the phase, so... Yeah. But... Even so, two Doom doesn't sound like a big deal at this point. We just said that uh, leaving the two plus Doom on that location is um, an okay thing to do also. That's true. Albeit it is two Doom every turn if you can't deal with that. Yeah. Well, it's two Doom when he gets to the top, right? And then he gets discarded? Or no? Oh, is that how it works? I thought it was every time. Uh, yeah, discard it. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. Yeah. All right, whatever. Uh, balance. This is the one where I just have to say, like, mm, they fixed it in the return to about the uh, intellect test. So yeah. that's, I'm like, I, I give it, you know, s- some low marks because of that, but it's not, it's not the biggest deal, except for you can just get locked out. Um, I, I've heard that people just replace if they have the return to they replace this even when they play just right. vanilla Dunwich. Yeah, I, I was always I was thinking about what to put for balance here and like you know I, the, obviously you know as you said the most egregious issue is that action to investigate to actually advance the act. Um, but like if that didn't if that problem didn't exist, honestly the balance would be like it's like a four or five mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. there's you can do whatever you want basically and like you have so much time that anyone could just do whatever you want and it's literally just the action to investigate is the problem so if i'm weighing that i guess i'll just and, and if the fact that they didn't you know realize that and they put in the return to that would be more of a problem i guess but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um 
So I guess I could just give it a three. Like, I would say it's like four and a half, but I think the action investigate knocks it down. Fine with me. Yeah, it's something that they, I think they're hesitant to errata these sorts of things. Yeah. But if they, if they had the opportunity to do that, then I think they would. But I bet there's mm -hmm. some like in-house rule against like, we can't errata things quite in that way. Like if we intended on it working a certain way and we just later decided, oh wait, that <laughs> that's kind of mean or whatever, that doesn't yeah. count as an errata. I think it's just if the, the wording was wrong. Right. Okay. Last bit. Okay, I gotta say, I this this one is boring. <laughs> you can tell like, by our discussion, right? Yeah, I for, like it's somehow more boring for me than Miskatonic Museum, um, and you know at least Undimensioned and Unseen is like frustrating, so it like gets emotion out of me. <laughs> um, this one just feels boring, and I don't really think this even needed to be a scenario which is very sort of you know low praise um the entire scenario is you're going up a hill and there's weird things on the hill which like to be fair is you know a thing that does happen in these kind of stories um but it doesn't really feel like a lot of exciting things are happening um you know i'm sure that you know whatever speculation we're not game designers um, that like, oh, what if they, what if you had to infiltrate and disrupt the ritual in different ways and the different paths had like different things to do? Like a, that, that's like a much more circle and done story, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I just think that there's so many things they could have done with this scenario that is more interesting than what they did. Um, so I'm going to give it a two, which is actually pretty, that's the lowest ever I've given for experience. I do feel like the problem that it's boring and it's actually short too, like, the first, it, it can go by so quickly. You said uh, eight rounds, you could yeah. crank it out. The first act is the same as the second, right? Like going and getting the clues Basically. from the first uh, yeah, first part of the, the hill, and then the second is like just the same thing again. Yeah. that's It wasn't very interesting the first time, and they didn't really crank the difficulty up that much on the second round. So, yeah. I mean, I do believe that it feels like you're going up a hill, I guess, but <laughs> so what? Yeah. Like, there needs to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, I agree. It's just not, I don't want to say, like, we have to decide all of these on, on difficulty, but there's not enough pressure to make it feel interesting. Like, yeah, you're really, I don't know, experiencing something that is uh, an interesting gameplay loop. I could, uh, I just had a thought, mm -hmm. and uh, if they, like, took something from the train scenario where like maybe all of the paths are open um, and maybe, you know, there was a way, a, a, a required test or something in order to get to the paths. But as like the doom advances or other encounter effects could like cause the paths to start disappearing um, because of like the ritual going on. And in that sense, it feels much more realistic that if you fail the scenario, you, you die because not only are you trapped, you know, not only does Yoxa thoughts, you know, come back, but you're like trapped at the peak of Sentinel Hill and you have to suffer the consequences or I don't know. I think was, there's so many things they could have done. So we didn't actually mention what it says in the resolution of this one if you fail. Right. He just yaks your thoughts here now. Bye bye. <laughs> there's not much. It just says uh yeah. Yeah. It's he's come to Earth and you you're all driven insane, you lose the campaign. Try again later. That's tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, it feels like it's an appropriate ending if you if you can't manage to get this done. I don't know what it's like on four player. I've only played it two or three, and if you, I mean, maybe as a first campaign, I think it's okay. But also remember that this is uh, the first campaign, and this used to come out in different Mythos packs. So if you had right. bought the Lost in Time and Space Mythos pack, anticipating that you'd move on. Or even if it hadn't come out yet and you were driven insane campaign over, <laughs> well, I mean, good reason to play the whole thing over again, but I think I'd feel pretty frustrated about that. Yeah, I think so too. It's a good thing that they all come in the same box now. That is true. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that touching on that just a little bit, uh, it kind of goes against one of their core philosophies of failing forward. Um, that there is the scenario that this can happen so late in the campaign. Like, I feel like if this happened earlier in the campaign, it wouldn't feel as nasty because it didn't take as long to get there. Whereas in this one, you're like, okay, well, now if we have to play this finale, you have to play every single scenario again, or just be like, screw it, we're not doing that, try it again. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's no way to, there's no way to fail forward in this narrative because it, they've written in that like, yeah, if he succeeds, Yoxa thoughts here, so better do better stop it. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of it almost feels like you know in the in a in a modern campaign, this scenario would just be a very long intro uh, paragraph for the finale. I feel like this one should, if you die or get defeated, then it should be like something that lets you fail forward into the next uh, scenario. But if you doom out, then that's the ritual being completed. Right, that makes sense to me. Like you get, yeah. I don't know. Janae shows up and you know helps stop the ritual, and then you get to jump into the portal later. Maybe Ooh. that would be a way to save this. But I, there's so many ways that I mean, I don't think you're gonna doom out this one. You're just gonna die from, um, you know, damage or horror. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's talk about the return two, which I think is a little better. Wait, of a I scenario. don't think you gave your rating on experience. Oh. I put it up there. I didn't think I said anything. What did <laughs> I right. say? I said the same thing. It's, okay. you know, two, it's okay, right? Yeah. It, there's worse out there, but um, it's not, again, I don't feel like it's insulting, like, or annoying or frustrating to play the this one. It's just kind of forgettable. Yeah, I agree. Which is kind of worse than, so in some ways it's worse than it being frustrating, but it's not. I mean, I think it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't dread playing this one at all. Right. Okay. Well, we'll move on to the return two and then, uh, that's it. Okay. The return two has some differences, not a whole lot. Um, one thing in the setup we should talk about is instead of getting those one or two clues, if you, uh, manage to save Peter Clover in, in that scenario, you instead get Naomi O'Banion. O'Banion. She's pretty cool. Uh, she does. She she add, you. Uh, you have to add her to your deck, meaning that you still have to find her and play her. Um, but uh, she is very good. Uh, book and fist stat. Everyone can use that pretty much. Mm -hmm. And uh, she can basically just ignore a token, a non auto fail token during a test. So, for example, if you drew, you know, uh, um, an elder thing, and you think you have expensive cards in your deck, you can just say no elder things for the rest of this test. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, has to be only certain kinds of tests, which is a little weird. Like, I think if they reprinted this today, they wouldn't be so narrow with this card. Right. But, man, that's a lot of soak. A lot of soak. Yeah. Yep. Pretty good for, you know, maybe a 10 damage treachery. I don't know. She seems really cool. I wish she came earlier than Scenario 7. I hate yeah. when you get story stuff in Scenario 7. It's Especially like, if she's just added to your deck and you don't start with her. Yeah, you might not find her. Plus the fact yeah. that you might discard her through all kinds of effects that are outside your control. Yeah. I think that if she started in play and then, you know, next scenario she, she was in your deck, I'd be like, oh, okay with that. But. Mm -hmm. Or add her to your opening hand, uh, something like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, that's, that's it for one thing. Up. Yep. And uh, we have a new, an additional altered path and diverging path. So you're going to remove, you're going to still remove two of them total. So you only have three left. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we have new candidates. Yes. Uh, so this one is lose two resources for each action. You have performed this one, this round, including this one. So you want to come here with as many actions basically remaining as possible. Um, and uh, do you not like this card because it loses resources? I mean, I don't like that in general, <laughs> but I think uh, I also don't like this because do you think they knew what the difference was between performed and, and uh, taken at oh, this goodness. point? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Good question. Like, what? why uh, make that distinction? Like, are they trying to uh, hurt you for what? What's a, a fast thing that would perform an action? <laughs> no, that's still taken. Um, oh, that is taken. You're right. I don't know. Um, cryptographic Cypher, maybe? Cryptographic Cypher. Um, not that that was in the card pool, but what were they thinking at this point in the card pool? Wait, cryptographic Cypher is not an action you perform, right? That's It's still fast. 
Oh, I don't remember. It's one of these stupid things where the what the events that have a bold designator do count, but the other ones don't. I don't know. Never mind. That's another video. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. And then two or more actions remaining. Please do in the current agenda. Fine. I say it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Just go here when you have uh, eleven yeah. doom on the agenda or something, right? So it doesn't advance. Oh, and these are connected to each other. Oh, that's funny. Was that true of any of the other ones? Yeah, there's a bunch of them that are connected to the to, to weird ones. I don't know exactly where, well, but why would you want to do that? I, mean, I don't know. These two are connected. You can go down and get to an enemy that was down here. Or if someone's trapped down here, you can get them up. Okay. In the second act. Anyway, the most important bit is a uh, base of the hill and ascending path. Yes. This time we have three clues. And if you discover any of them, any number of them, you get to put the diverging paths into play. So this is good. You can use events like Look What I Found. You yep. can use Sixth Sense. You can use Red of Seeking. You can use Duke. And there you go. You're only going to have three locations. That's why there's three clues. And no more limit uh, once, per, uh, once per round. Yep. Um... Anything that moves clues is hilarious, and you could technically soft lock yourself, but who knows? <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> yeah, it's always funny. Although I think at this point, if you have, because you need at least one location to do it. I guess, like you know, you go up here and then you gene the clues down, right? <laughs> and then you soft lock yourself because you can't spawn clues here, and there's no clues there. And then you have to have gene die, etc. You could draw <laughs> the uh, thing that shuffles these back into the their unrevealed side right yes of course so yes those locations would probably come back since you're already at act two so that yeah. does make sense. no no but when you put them back in you cannot place clues on them during act two they cannot be placed on non-altered locations oh but they're not ah okay okay you're right yeah okay that's pretty stupid <laughs> it's just, just ignore it it's fine just yep. don't do it <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the thing that causes you to lose the game. <laughs> Although, right, it means that if you move them to another location, you can discover them like normal clues. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that's so stupid. Okay, All okay, right. yeah, anyway. Oh, let's not think about that. Yep. All right, so, uh, that's yeah, the this entire, is... That's everything that's different. Yep. There's some return to counter deck we've already talked about, but otherwise, it's the same. Yeah. Um, improvement? Yes, this, is, this fixes the scenario, I think. It makes it yeah. just more playable with more investigators. The yep. other locations are just kind of a, a drop in the bucket. I don't think it fixes these other issues we had about it being kind of boring, mm -hmm. but it's at least more playable. That's true. That's kind of it. Any other yep. verdict on the return to? No, I mean, it's just uh, it's about it. It doesn't fix those problems, but it fixes the one like bug in the game. So yeah, that's yeah. Good. And I think the other return two sets are, are fine here. There's like the prison of fear is gone, right? So yeah. not that there's that many locations to move. Eh, no. This is just a it's 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 a scenario. It's a scenario in Arkham it's Horror. Scenario. It's fine. The next one though, we do get to go into Lost in Time and Space, which you will hear us talk about next time. And I'm much more excited to talk about that one. Me too. All right. See you then.